the baby, when, she, when we brought her in, she cried all night long. We couldn't figure out what to do. We were walking her, walking her, you know. And uh, then we realized her head was infested with lice. Mm-hmm. Right? So we shampooed her. We did all this. We actually shaved her head. And then she slept. So the next day, one of her pastors came over and said, I said to him, would you go to this family? And I don't know how he found them because in the shanty slums, there's no street signs, there's no right. numbers. I, would you go and find this couple and here's some medicated shampoo because if she's got it, can oh, you imagine house. being like on your deathbed? Mm-hmm. So I don't know how he found this couple and he's shampooing their heads, mm-hmm. shampooing their hair. And he's sharing the gospel with them. Mm. And uh, we both accepted the Lord. We believe that you are strong by design, and you were made in God's image to have a strong body, mind, and spirit. You're listening to the number one strength and health authority podcast in the world. So let's get ready to unlock your potential and transform your life in today's episode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode here on the Strong by Design podcast. So great to have you uh, sitting alongside my co-host and close friend and uh, co-worker. And, and anything else? Avid coffee drinker. <laughs> Avid coffee drinker. <laughs> Mr. Jared Haley uh, has joined us for this conversation because I thought he could really add to it um, uh, and, and share some of his stories uh, in the in with our, our very special guest, who uh, is a world traveler and doing some things, some big things, uh, on the other side of the globe. And uh, so it's just an honor and a pleasure to have John in the building today. And uh, and uh, this is a long time coming. I'll, I'll have a funny story about it. I'll, I'll let you know in, in a moment. But uh, for our longtime listeners, welcome back. Great to have you, as always. And for our first first-time listeners... Thank you for finding the show. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and now you can go back and listen to several hundred past episodes over the years. We are just loving the podcast and all of the great, meaningful conversations that we're having with guests and experts from all walks of life, from all around the world, and uh, it's really absolutely um, just getting better and better every year, I feel like. Uh, Jared? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, today, I wanted you here because I thought that this conversation with our guest, John, would be a little bit more rich because of your past experience and your pastoring and stuff. Mm-hmm. So thanks for being part of this. Yeah, absolutely. And I said uh, before we hit record, I wanted to maybe do something we haven't done in a while or something a little different. I thought, let's open in prayer. Sure. Oh, wow. um, would you do that for us and bless this? time together i'll allow it okay <laughs> i'll uh, go for it brother all right father god thank you so much for uh this conversation that we uh get to have with john this morning i just father we want to play pray for his ministry uh for uh, all of these children that they are uh helping around the world father as they are helping them uh, with their their physical well-beings. Father, I just pray that you would touch them uh, in their spirits as well, that Jesus, that you would reveal yourself to them, that, Father, you would bring about transformation uh, in their lives. Uh, thank you for using John in, in this ministry to, uh, to do that. I just pray that everyone that is listening to this today, Father, that you would be speaking into their lives as well. Help for us to know, Father, what is my part? How do I participate in, in helping uh, people who are less fortunate than myself? Uh, and Lord, I just pray that your 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 spirit would be present, uh, that we would be attentive to its presence with us, and that the Lord, you just guide our conversation. I uh, thank you so much for your goodness and grace to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you for that, buddy. So our special <laughs> guest, and I don't like to do much reading, but he's worthy of at least a, a few sentences for the back of his uh, wonderful little book here. Uh, our guest is John Chalkis, and I. I Got the spelling or the pronunciation correct. Did you? I think I did. Is that right? Chalkis. It's Chalkis. Ch- Ch- oh, did I say Chalkis? You or? did. <laughs> Son of a. <laughs> you're, so, you're so proud I of yourself. I knew it. And I, had, I told, I said I had like three versions of how to pronounce it yeah. that yeah. I practiced yeah. in my car even, and none of them were right. Yeah. So he corrected me. It's chalk, like a chalkboard S, Chalkis. Yeah. And I still put the L. You did. Chalkis. Son of a. I'll. 
you're used to it. So I'm good. Okay, so John, <laughs> I've been called worse. John, yeah, Chalkis <laughs> serves as the executive director, co-founder of Seeds of Hope Children's Ministry, and it's an organization that helps orphan children, primarily those affected um, or infected by HIV/AIDS. They provide housing, medical services, and education for the children in their care. And John and his ministry love uh, innovation, creativity, and thinking outside the box, which has led them to a, a building a village in Zambia with his beautiful wife, uh, Susan. They live up in British Columbia. They have nine, or, yeah, nine children, and now you said about 15 grandchildren. And, and, hopefully, the family, more and hopefully more coming because yeah. the family's getting God's bigger. good. God's God good. God's good. I mean, that's just a testament to the type of man, obviously, that you are, that you're service oriented and obviously um you know you do a great job loving on others and strengthening others and some of these children are adopted children too yeah we have which, four adopted children yeah, which is wow so you have five biological children and four adopted yeah wow that's fantastic thanks for coming here you know we've been planning this around your world traveling for the last several months and you have more to do so I appreciate you squeezing it in but find out that you've been in the this Tampa area a lot. In we love life. Florida. I yeah. absolutely love it. Yeah. yeah. And we love Tampa. Or like, like, we love the whole, the whole state. It's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But it Tampa's is. the best, right? <laughs> but Tampa Clearwater really yeah. is, takes the cake, right? Um, it's kind of people who aren't familiar with this area of Florida. You know, Miami gets a lot of accolades and, and attention and stuff. But the Tampa area, which has become really hugely popular in the last decade or so in terms of growth and we're winning championships for our sports teams. That always helps. Uh, if Tom Brady comes to town, everyone wants to, to watch football, and the, the Lightning seem to be winning every other year. So that's always good. Uh, and don't forget my Rays. I love my Rays. And they're going to get a new stadium here soon. So we are big sports fans here at Critical Bench. Um, but the Tri-City area is very unique. Because it is tr three cities basically all adjacent to each other around the bay. And it makes it really, really cool and interesting with a lot of suburbs and stuff. And uh, there's just so much to do. There's so much activity, so much uh, great weather. So it, it never gets bored. And so for families like Jared's, who they moved here from Denver and mine. And like our kids are always you know, up to their eyeballs with things to do, whether it's going to the beach or... You know, enjoying the theme parks. Playing football outside in winter. Playing, yeah, right. Year-round sports, mm -hmm. you know, which you don't have to shut anything down for five months out of the year, which is always great. So getting back to, to our guest, to John, we, you know, I wanted to use this opportunity to get to know you and your story, your journey, what brought you to doing all this great mission work and, and really just giving your heart to those in great need. And... Um, and the, the funny story, though, behind hearing from and getting to know John a little bit was through an email, an email that was often unchecked because the Strong by Design podcast, I'm outing myself, by the way. <laughs> All right, I'm outing myself. The Strong by Design podcast email. By the way, if you have interest in being on the show or have an amazing story, email us. Yeah, and in six months, we'll get back and to in you. Six, Jared, <laughs> I've already said I'm out of myself. Stop picking on me. And uh, I will get back to you. It just might take some time. But I, I will, I've been more diligent about going in there. John happened to take advantage of that after listening to an episode that touched him with uh, our guest at the time and was a host for a moment and did some uh, work for us, Joe Miller. He was touched by her story, and he... he reached out to us with his own story, and I was moved uh, very much by his email, reached out to him, and we just started a conversation. And here we are, what, feels like six months later uh, or so. And um, so this is a great day, certainly. But go back in your, in your history. Was it meeting your wife? Was it a vision that you had together? Was it something you were already kind of getting involved with on your own? What got you in this line of mission work yeah well we were just a normal family we had kids and uh, our kids were playing baseball and doing all the normal stuff and i yeah. was working and 
we just built a house and um, where were you living at the time we were living in uh, british columbia okay and um, my wife got a letter from a missionary in thailand and this woman wanted to build an orphanage for hiv kids because she was volunteering at the government orphanages and she noticed all these children that were shunned mm. nobody wanted to touch them they were afraid of them they didn't know what hiv was uh, at that time the the stigma was incredible. Yeah, this is probably what, like this, late 80s, early 90s? Yeah, right? the early 90s. Mm -hmm. So we got this letter, and uh, she needed, she made a deal with God that she'll open an orphanage for HIV kids, and she needed $17,000. My wife got the letter, and she promised her. Well, I remember that, because I was working night shift, I was, takes me about five cups of coffee to get going in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she comes running up the stairs. I was just having my first cup. And she, she was running up the stairs like we won the lottery. She was so excited. Guess what? Guess what? We're, we're going to open an orphanage. I'm like, what? What? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like giving my, my head a shake. I'm like, what? you know. And she goes, yeah, and it's only going to cost us $17,000. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and she tells me about this letter. I'm like, Susan, we don't have $17,000. And she got really upset with me. She goes, well, we raise money for soccer teams and baseball teams. Like, why can't we raise money for this woman? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, well, we, well how are we going to do that? She goes, and I'm like, well, no, forget that. We're not. And she goes, what about James? What about James? I'm like, who's James? We were, we were studying the book of James. Mm -hmm. We're at James 127, uh -huh. uh, religion of God our Father accepts us pure and faultless. Is this to look after orphans and widows? She goes, what about James? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, well, whatever, right? Oh, next thing I know, next <laughs> thing I know, next thing I know, like um, uh, my wife and my kids are walking down the street, knocking on doors, collecting pop bottles oh, and beer bottles. And, and next thing I know, my garage is full of cans and bottles and I'm sorting stuff. And, and, um, and here we go. But then the next thing was, there was a school, an elementary school across the street from us where my kids went to school. Well, the next thing, the next big idea was to cook and bake, uh, bake apple pies and sell them. And we baked like 400 pies at a time in my little oven. Mm -hmm. And we were just like shift work. Like all our friends came over and we're peeling <laughs> apples and, and, uh, and we'd sell them like this. Like the teachers, the male teachers especially, hey, I'll take five, I'll yeah. take six, I'll oh take... Yeah. They were just, homemade apple homemade pies, apple pies yeah, right? not a lot better in life than anyway, that. So, we, so the first year we raised $23,000. Oh my goodness. Get out of here. And we, just, oh from, yeah, just from pies or? Pies. And then people... we do hot dog sales in front of supermarkets mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Did anybody like, like pick up on what you're doing and then they were like giving a little extra? Yeah. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was a church. Mm -hmm. This is, like this, is mm -hmm. the pie. Mm -hmm. this is funny. This is funny. There was a church a couple blocks up that heard what we were doing and said, Susan, why don't you come up on Sunday? We'll give you 10 minutes to tell us what you're doing. Because uh -huh. they were really, you know, they mm -hmm. want to hear more about that. So Sunday morning comes and, you know, I'm getting ready. The kids are getting ready. And Susan's in the bathroom. I said, hey, like, we got to go. You're mm -hmm. speaking this morning. She goes, I'm not coming. I'm, what? What? Yeah. You're speaking. I am not coming. Yeah. She, she, she's an introvert. Right? She yeah. does not want to. Well, we speak all, all, all over North America now, but yeah. that was our first speaking again. We didn't show up. Oh, no. <laughs> she was so <laughs> nervous. We didn't show up. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then what happened was, another thing that happened was that there was a company in Thailand that heard what we do. They make enamelware jewelry, like for Disney and stuff like that. And like we couldn't sell, we couldn't sell the Disney stuff, but they gave us ten thousand dollars worth of enamelware jewelry. Oh wow! So we used to do jewelry parties, mm -hmm. like Tupperware parties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. That's, so we raised twenty three thousand dollars the first year. So I thought, oh, okay, we did it. That was awesome. Praise yeah. the Lord, we sent the money off. Yeah, and I, that was we good. Did it. Well we done. done it right. Yeah, that was it. And well, and what, this is even before email. Then we get a call. Hey. Uh, we need more money for next month's rent, and we need more diapers and formula. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. So we just kept going, and we started child sponsor program. We registered as a nonprofit. We incorporated. We got a board of direct, like uh, the whole sh yeah. shebang, right? So, um, and then were 19th, you still working night shifts? At the, I was still through working. All this? Yeah. So yeah. I I go to work, come home, and go back to work because I'd be writing newsletters. I'd be mm -hmm. writing all kinds of stuff like that, planning fundraisers, and not to mention you, know, you have. Kids. And then we had kids, yeah. right? Well, my kids. <laughs> well, then, well, then 1997, we went to Thailand for the free. We want to see this place, right? So we went, and um, I was, um, my kids were small. My youngest was uh, five mm -hmm. at the time. 
brothers, the three youngest, five, five, six, and seven. Went with you and Susan? Yeah, to Thailand for three months. And then we went back oh again gosh, for nine for months. months. Yeah, then we went back for nine months. But anyways, so I'm thinking to myself, and we lost kids. Like, you know, these kids are HIV kids, right? And I thought, what am I going to do if a kid dies while we're there? Mm-hmm. I was kind of freaked out. Sure. Well, we get there and we do a little tour. The manager, her name is Jane. She's from Australia. She's giving us the tour. The kids are running around. They're holding your hands. You know, they're all excited. And then we go through the nursery. There's a crib, and there's this little girl. She looked like a prisoner of war. She was just nothing but bones. Mm. And I picked her up. I remember picking her up, and it took my breath away. I I couldn't breathe. Mm. And I said, Jane, what happened to her? Like, why 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 is she like that? She had her her head looked like a skull. Yeah. Ugh. I could feel every bone completely in her body. malnourished. Yeah. And I said, what happened? She was a failure to thrive. And she, she just stared. She stared right through me. I, and I did this, and she didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you said failure to thrive? Failure to thrive. Well, what does that mean? She, yeah. said, she said, well... You just turn around. There you go. Yeah, she, she said, um, no one's held her. Oh, man. No one's held this little uh-huh. girl. How old was she? She was like 18 months. Okay. And then um, we went home. I couldn't get her out of my mind. I never seen like it. Yeah. And then the next morning, we we got a call in the morning. She died. Oh, no. So that was the first funeral we did. Yeah. And then in the first three days, five babies died. Yeah. I was broken. Wow. And, and I wasn't prepared for it. Mm-hmm. I remember it. And, um, but this the is missionary, something, was this something that was probably happening regularly? But was, not, but yeah, it was happening, but it wasn't happening like we might lose one a, a month or something. Mm-hmm. But right. this was bam, bam, bam. Like this. Right, right. And then the witness of <clears throat> firsthand was. Oh. Well, it wasn't only that. Uh, I, I went to the home in the morning, and, and the, the, the woman, the machine, hands me the baby, so clo- uh, clothe her and bathe her and get her ready for the. For the I'm like, what? What? Mm-hmm. I've never done that. Mm-hmm. So we're doing funerals. I'm like, yeah. And my kids are running around while this is happening, right? They're mm-hmm. all playing, and then people are, like this one woman. <clears throat> um, we got word she, she the baby lived with us, and then um, she got a lot of pressure. She was a hill tribe woman, and she got a lot of pressure from the chief and their neighbors that why are you letting these Christians raise your baby? Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And when uh, they took the baby back, and then the baby died. Mm-hmm. So we went there. It was like a hut, and the baby was wrapped in a blanket, in a towel, a dirty towel, in the floor on the floor, and they're arguing where the funeral is going to be, mm-hmm. and this woman's saying, "No, these people fed fed my baby and fed me and took care of me. You guys didn't. You weren't there for me. Mm-hmm. Nobody came and gave me uh, food for us. Nobody came to care for us. Mm-hmm. They did. So they they." Uh, Settled, they, they compromised. We'll do the funeral and they'll do the, the burial. I thought, All right? So we did the funeral, and she was wailing, smother. Her husband brought HIV to the house and wiped out the family. Mm-hmm. And she was wailing. She was saying things like, It's all because of me, my son. It's my fault, my son. She was wailing. I'm, just, I'm trying to hold it together, <clears throat> and then <clears throat> we get. The baby, we wrapped him in the blanket, and I'm I'm just following directions now. Follow me, so I'm holding I'm holding the baby. <clears throat> I get in the van, about eight of us, and Susan stayed behind. We we're going to what I thought was a cemetery. It was kind of like a cemetery, and we get to this place. A monk comes, takes the baby from me. I'm following these monks now. Mm-hmm. They, and I'm I see a pile of wood, with a tire on it. And I'm like, I'm, it's like I was watching a movie. Mm-hmm. Like I wasn't even there. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, is that what I think it is? Mm-hmm. And they put the baby in the tire. Mm-hmm. And then a monk pours gas on it and poof. I'm like, I couldn't believe it. I was just in shock. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was my initiation. Into, yeah. But we led the mom to the Lord. Yeah. Which country was this? This is in Thailand. Okay. <clears throat> And that was to me awakening, a recommitment, and a sense of urgency mm-hmm. to share the gospel yeah. for me. You still have a relationship with her now? 
Do you know? I think she she passed away. Okay. She was HIV positive. Okay. So she passed away a few years later. Okay. Gotcha. There was a, a number of incidents like that, right? And so then um, we came back the following year. Those missionaries went on furlough, and we took over. And what we noticed was so. In t- so here's the thing: with HIV children born, uh, children born to an HIV mom, they'll test positive at birth. But it's a false read. It's a. It's called a false positive, mm-hmm. because it takes eighteen months for a baby to develop their own antibodies. It's the mother's antibodies in their system. Gotcha. All right. So they'll. T- so after eighteen months, you'll get a true reading. So what was happening to these kids, and this was criminal, was they would go end up in government orphanages that were overrun, understaffed, and nobody wanted anything to do with these kids, and they would die mm-hmm. from. Just neglect. Neglect. Yeah. Malnourishment. Yeah. Neglect. Right? Because nobody, right. like I said, they would they hose them down. To clean them, they would hose them down on yeah. rubber mats. Yeah. The only touch they would get was from <clears throat> latex gloves. Because mm-hmm. people were afraid. So we were actually saving lives now. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of our kids that we would get come in positive, but that was a false reading. And then 80% of them were actually negative, mm-hmm. 80%. Wow. Which After. is a miracle when you think about it. a baby shares the mother's nutrition and yep. blood and all that. Yeah. So that's a miracle of God, yeah. the mercy of God. Yeah. So what was happening is a lot of people uh, would be adopting these kids. So these kids would have been adopted to America, Canada, Australia, mm-hmm. all over Europe, France, Denmark, Holland. And families that would adopt these kids would start contributing to this home and support at home. And we thought, while we were running the home, we thought, there's a lot of support here. And they don't really need us. Mm -hmm. So we started praying, God, where do you want us to go? So we were back home in Canada. And one day my wife wakes up, and I'm having my coffee again. And she says says to me, I had this dream uh, last night that they were going to Africa. This is all this stuff is your wife's fault. Yeah. I know, right? Like, I mean, you yeah. can... God yeah. speaks to her, right? You must have like this <laughs> so, trauma so, in the morning every time you're pouring your cup of coffee. I know, man. Like, you're just a regular guy <laughs> trying to enjoy your cup of coffee and right. your wife says, hey, honey. Yeah, so she says... What? Yeah. So what was happening was, oh, so before that, so we're, we're praying, so Lord, we, we want to do the same thing, but let's, we want to we want to serve these kids, right? Mm-hmm. So we're looking at Mexico, Central America. My wife speaks Spanish. I love Spanish. I love mm-hmm. Spanish food. I love the music. Like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, that'll be awesome. Right, mm-hmm. and we can even drive down there, so there won't be a lot of airfare. So we're, we went to Mexico, we went to uh, El Salvador, Guatemala. We're looking at all these places, and the doors kept shutting. Right, mm-hmm. so uh, not easy to go help. Yeah, so, in so other parts of the world. Isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, it was all kinds of stuff. Right, so um, I'm having my coffee. She comes in. She, I had this dream. We're going to Africa. I'm like, Susan, do you know how big Africa? We don't know anybody in Africa, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we had connections in Mexico. We had connections, like, and I thought maybe Asia, because we had a lot of connections in Asia mm-hmm. now, or, or Mexico, or Central America. I'm like, do you know how big? And she goes, I, she got mad at me. She goes, I'm just telling you what the dream was. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. so, I like how both of these stories started with you going, what? And then she gets mad at you. And then, now we have an orphanage. I guess we're making, <laughs> right. I guess we're making more pie. So, yeah. so, so she's doing, she's in a kiosk that day at a, at a mall. She mm-hmm. has like our brochures and stuff. Mm-hmm. And she's doing she has sponsorship stuff. Yeah. And this woman says to her, comes up to her and says, hey, did you ever think of going to Africa? Uh-huh. And she's like, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, yeah. Uh-huh. She goes, well, I, this, she was a missionary in Botswana. Uh-huh. She was like, I have this friend in Zambia. Mm-hmm. Uh, Boom, boom, boom. So she gives me, so she gets the address of this pastor in Zambia. Yeah. So I start writing this guy. And I don't tell him what I, what I want to do. I, I just say, hey, uh, I met this lady. Can you tell me um, what's this age situation in your country? So he writes me back. Mm-hmm. And this is not email. This is like post. Okay. Two months later, I get a letter back. And then I said, I, and then I write some more. So how is that affecting your church? And mm-hmm. what's happening with the economy? With like all these questions. Is this right? a local pastor? A local pastor okay. from Zambia. Yeah. Right? He's a Zambian guy. Yeah, yeah. So how are you after, translating that? He's speaking English. He speaks he's, English. Yeah. Okay. They speak Got English, it. right? Okay. So he's speaking. As a matter of fact, he was a pastor in Vancouver. Interesting. Oh my gosh. And Which his is wife, in British his Columbia. wife, yeah, and his yeah. wife was um, 
physiotherapist at the Vancouver General Hospital. Okay. And they moved back to their country to serve their people. Yeah. Right, amazing guy. He's, okay. he's actually still on our, he's still on our board. He's our yeah. chairman of the board there. Okay. Oh Anyways, so I, I didn't know this guy. Yeah. He's writing me letters. And after about, I don't know, 18 months or something, I had a pack of... I'm like, well, now what am I going to do? So what we did was we sent a couple over. I couldn't go. I was working. So we... we, we we put together a, a you binder. You still have at this point another job, or or are you full time at the? I'm, I'm doing like I've, I got two full time jobs now, right? Okay, okay. So we we put together a binder of questions like what's the economy like, what's the the government like, what's um, the economy like, what's the what's the attitude to foreigners, mm -hmm. what's the HIV Culture. situation like, yeah. what's the education like, what is um, your medical system like, like everything we could possibly think of, right? Yeah. So, oh yeah, what's crime like? Is it dangerous? Like all mm -hmm. these things, right? Politically. And we send this couple off for uh, six weeks. And they come back and they filled out all the questions. And they said, we had a meeting, a board meeting. And, and this, they said, well, if we can sum up everything that this binder says, is that we can do it in one word, despair. Mm. Despair. So I wrote the pastor, hey, so then by that time, we, you know, they know that we're interested in starting a home. I said, would your church be willing to start with us? And we want to start the project. And then I went the following year for three months to buy a property. Mm -hmm. I got on a plane. I thought, what am I doing? Where am I going? I had no idea what I was doing. Like, I, I had no idea. I had You're my, going over solo at yeah. this point? I'm going solo. Just yeah. me. And I'm going to go buy, buy property. And I had cash. I didn't bring cash with me, but I was going to wire it over. Mm -hmm. But I had cash. And... Uh, we bought this property, uh, one acre with, with a pretty large building, this beautiful building, right in town. And we came the following year to, to renovate. We brought a team with us. We just gutted the house, rebuilt everything. And, we, and Susan and I stayed behind, and we started bringing kids in. The first five kids all died. Mm -hmm. same, kind of same situation? Well, just yeah. neglect? And it's, and actually, the poverty level was just mind-boggling yeah to me. absolutely mind-boggling hmm. so uh we so just then kept... when you're bringing these kids in it, do you have any contact with the parents or they're just these are just kids on the street that you... usually um the parents are gone okay so the kids so well, except for one typically so, orphans yeah so there was one there, there was one parent that I remember they're orphan but they're not like in a different orphanage or something, you're no, finding them on no. the street and you're just... Usually what happens is the extended family says, well, you know, I got six kids of my own and my brother died and I've got his gotcha. kids and I can't take care of them, yep. right? So we had this one parent, this one parent came, a couple came, they knocked on the gate and we let them in and they were very, very sick. And they said, we can't take care of our daughter anymore. Mm -hmm. And they uh, had HIV and stuff. So we took the daughter in. And then um, we heard about a few months later that, that the mom died. No, no, the mom and dad was still alive. Uh, people were dying, and then we reasoned that they're going to die soon. Mm -hmm. So one of our pastors we worked with came over and said, "Oh no! What happened was the baby. The baby when she when we brought her in, she cried all night long." We couldn't figure out what to do. We were walking her, walking her, you know. And uh, then we realized her head was infested with lice. Mm -hmm. Right? So we shampooed her. We did all this. And we actually shaved her head. Mm -hmm. And then she slept. Mm -hmm. So the next day, the one of her pastors came over and said, I said to him, would you go to this family and I don't know how he found them because in the shanty slums there's no street signs there's no right. numbers I, would you go and find this couple and here's some medicated shampoo because if she's got it can you imagine house. being like on your deathbed mm -hmm. so I don't know how he found this couple but he went there and he knocked on the door and he said oh I'm pastor so and so and um, John and Susan sent me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I have some shampoo. I want to watch. So, and then I have no running water. So you had to go down with the bucket, carry the water back from yeah. the creek. And he's shampooing their heads, mm -hmm. shampooing their hair, and he's sharing the gospel with them. Mm. And uh, they both accepted the Lord. Yeah. And they both died a couple months later. Mm. So those are the kind of stories. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's hard to even. Mm hmm relate to some of this you know yeah. is it 
very privileged first world yeah. U.S. citizen, mm -hmm. and I've had very limited international travel, especially in well, regions come, like you'd this. Come with me, yeah. At some point, Seriously. maybe that'd be a great thing to do. Anyways, um, tomorrow. He already bought you a ticket, <laughs> Aaron. I don't know if I'm ready. I got baseball coming. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's where I got to go now. Before priorities, the, right? Priorities. Uh huh. That's so, right. So, well. It, it was it was really difficult. We would lose a lot of kids. Like I remember one time that um, Susan. So we never sent a kid to the hospital by, by themselves. We always sent a caregiver. Mm -hmm. But that time we had like twenty five kids. We had we had a nurse working for us. We had a number of staff working with us. And was are you employing house. locals then too? To yeah, we employed all. It was, yeah. it was all yeah. nationally run. There was yeah. no foreigners. There. Yeah. So we were trained people and hired people. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, and you the, have obviously some medical uh, train, trained people or, or just loosely medical. Med like in Zambia? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would think so. Well, I'll so. tell you more. We actually have yeah. a medical committee that helps us now. Oh, wow. So, um, so we would lose people and stuff. So um, one day um, we had a baby in, in the hospital. But it wasn't, it, she had a fever. It wasn't anything serious, but she had to be in the hospital. So Susan went to relieve the caregiver and to bring food. And she walked in as the doctor's pronouncing her dead. She was like 18 months. And so she was not expecting this. Mm -hmm. She came over to, you know, how was your day and how's the baby and that kind of stuff. And the baby's dead. Mm -hmm. And the doctor's pronouncing her dead. And, he wrapped her up in a blanket and he handed it to her. And he says, go down to the morgue and as a doctor there, I'll do the death certificate. So she's like shell-shocked. She's mm -hmm. like, huh? So she goes and she goes down the stairs because she doesn't trust the elevator because it all gets stuck. And she finds herself in the morgue in a lineup of mothers holding their babies. Oh my gosh. And now she's like in shock. Mm -hmm. And they're waiting to go. They're lined up to see the doctor. He's sitting at a desk and he's signing death certificates. Hmm. And he says, yeah, I'll just put her in that fridge over there, 15 or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So she opens the drawer and there's no room. Mm. It's full of babies. Mm -hmm. So she comes home and she's, it was raining. And I, don't she's, think my, I don't know how my wife would respond to such a thing my wife's in medical work yeah. she's a, an rn um but i don't know how she i don't know how anyone it's a different be, world man i tell you like yeah, this how, how do you, she must have been just like off in her own i mean the, the only god is going to be able to help you deal well, she, with such a thing well she was um she came home was pouring rain and she's screaming at god oh yeah she says, God, I don't understand. We line up to go to McDonald's. We line up to go into the movie. We line up, and these women are lined up to put their kids in the fridge. Mm -hmm. So she's screaming at God. And, and God gave her a vision of mm. eternity. Mm -hmm. And that's what kept us going. Yeah. And then for me, and then we, we got interrupted Hold on. virals. All right. Do we get to hear more? He gave her a vision of eternity. Yeah. <laughs> well, she wants to know. Like I said, do we have a description? Maybe we should add Susan to join us. To <laughs> well, yeah. She, she has a whole different perspective. I'm things. sure. Like, it's so different like, when you hear her. Because she, like, um, uh, she has this mother's heart, right? And, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm the builder. I like to build stuff. I like mm -hmm. to, and mm -hmm. she's like, no, I'm building a home here. Yeah. Right? Anyways. God gave her a vision of, of heaven, of, of uh, eternity, and how small our life is here yeah. compared to eternity. So we, we're, we see a lot of suffering here. But, and the verse that always came to mind, because like, I work with a lot of pastors in impoverished countries, and I always think of the verse uh, where it says, the last will be first, and the first will be mm -hmm. last. And I say, amen, Lord, yeah. amen. Yeah. These pastors are heroes they're absolute heroes. They, they, they suffer. They're willing to go through persecution. They're willing to... And, uh, I, and I say, amen, Lord. May they be first. Yeah. Right? May, mm -hmm. they, may they be the f best in the kingdom of yeah. God. Will you yes. reward them for all those things? Yeah. Because we don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. Right? We live in such luxury, and they live with such sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I think of 
I mean, as I've kind of processed through some of that stuff myself, and I just think about, uh, I think as human beings, we think of, of death as the end. Right. Um, and so you kind of have to, you have to get over that hump to recognize that uh, it's not the end. It's, a, it's just a part of the journey. Um, so I think that that's helped me anyway, as I've, I've kind of processed through early deaths or, or, or things that I can't understand when it comes to, even like with, with the Old Testament, right, where, uh, you know, people be like, well, how can a good God, like, wipe out all the firstborn in Egypt? That's not, yeah. that doesn't sound like a, lo- a loving God. And I'm like, but we don't know what happened to them for eternity. Yeah. You know, he took their, their physical lives away here, but maybe he just gently ushered them into, I don't know, you know, I, God gets to. He's the creator of life. So yeah. It's not, for him, it's not murder. For him, it's just so. transition. Yeah, I'm not saying that that justifies anything. No, of course, <laughs> as far of course as, not. As far as things going on in other countries we, and, we and, and difficulties, and yeah, but what a what an incredible. Uh, your wife sounds like she just has she this really, really cool, intimate relationship mm-hmm. with God. Um, it reminds me of my wife a lot, actually, <laughs> uh, and the things that women are have this yeah. intuition. Or yeah, yeah. It, it's very uh, it's weird because uh, you know. I don't, I don't know how it operates with with ministry or within your home, but you know I'm trying to be the spiritual leader at home, and then all of a sudden God's like speaking. The, it's almost like I told her this morning. I said uh, God spoke to me yesterday and said I need to be more respectful and conscious of the gifts that He's given her, um, yeah. and uh, and so and and really pay attention uh, when when things are going when He's speaking things to her. Um, and so it's just, it's interesting. It's fun to hear your story, I guess, and, and see, feel that relatability of, uh, I understand, you know, my wife coming to me and telling me something that I'm like, what are you talking about? That's crazy. <laughs> 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 so, right. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, not no, at all. No, that's good. We're having a conversation. Yeah, I, I, I was kind of getting some of that same, like, it sounds like Christiana in a little bit. Uh-huh, you know? yeah. As they seem to have this extra... Um, connection mm-hmm. and uh, that's that's awesome yeah but that's what it takes two right i mean two it's, become one flesh you two well we make, need each other right the, yeah we need each other yeah she needs you for for your what you do so great and your strengths and mm-hmm. you need her for what she does so great and um yeah i mean his his plan is is pretty perfect mm-hmm. because yeah. we can't do it i alone. think that's a uh, it's a spiritual gift that I think doesn't get spoken about very often, or and it's hard to understand. Is that well, it sounds like more like a, like a prophetic gift, you know? Um, and it's I don't know if, if you guys have talked about that, or if, if that's how you feel like you would categorize that that gift in her. But um, I know with Christiana, it feels very much like a like a prophetic type well, I know gift. For, she's more sensitive than I am. Yeah, yeah, for sure, right? So, anyways, in in 2005, we got antiretrovirals, ARVs, which okay. is the, the drugs, mm-hmm. HIV people. And uh, with those drugs, people are HIV positive, live a normal lifespan. Mm-hmm. And we got them in 2005 in, in Africa. Mm-hmm. In Zambia. Yeah. So now we have a big problem because, like, all our kids are going to live and what are we going to do with them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So yeah. we had a, a one acre yeah. property. We had about 50 kids on it, mm-hmm. right? Had, Is that a drug that you have to take your, the rest of your life? So yeah. it used to be called the cocktail. It used to be like 15 pills, yeah, yeah. That, right? Yeah. And it was a, a huge pill burden. You, know, you got to mm-hmm. you know, be really disciplined. You got to make sure you take your medication. And mm-hmm. They reduce it to one pill. Mm-hmm. Easy, was, yeah. right? You just take one pill a day, mm-hmm. the rest of your life, mm-hmm. and you're good to go. Crazy. So we got that. And now we go, oh, now, now what do we do? We got 50 kids, yeah. they're all going to live. What are we going to do with them, right? So we go, well, we're going to, we should build our own school because what, the other thing we notice is that the education system is really poor in Zambia. Yeah. Right? Like, for example, uh, one day uh, I, I was going through the kids' books and I, I noticed one of the little girls, her printing was outstanding. Like mm-hmm. was, and I said, hey, would you come over and read this to me? Mm-hmm. And she couldn't read it. Oh, she copied like so. What they how they learn is the old British way of teaching is that you co- the teacher writes something on a board, you copy it, mm-hmm. and he'll explain what it is. But if you don't get it, you don't get it, right? right. Well, she copied everything perfect, like mm-hmm. outstanding. It looked like a machine did, like somebody typed it, right? Mm-hmm. 
And she couldn't read it. Hmm. So like, man, we got to do something. So we, we thought we're going to build our own school. So we went out and bought property, which was a whole miracle in itself the way it happened. Yeah. So we bought 72 acres and we started Your story is full of miracles. So. Yeah. So we started developing <laughs> right? it. Right? Yeah. The yeah. whole thing's a miracle. Yeah. Right? It's, a, it's funny how it's a like, miracle it's, burger. It just <laughs> keeps stacking. Yeah. And, and we keep being, every yeah. time it happens, you're, you're still surprised. Yeah. You know? That's why I named the book Amazing Life because yeah. every time I, everything's amazing. Like I, I get, I get to grace. I'm like, mm-hmm. this is amazing. And I, I never get tired of it. I am yeah. just in awe. Oh, I can't yeah. believe God. Like, how did this happen? Yeah. Right? Like, how did I, because I was working night shifts, yeah. mining my own. It, business right yeah. <laughs> it's happening just because you're mm-hmm. saying yes and you're yeah. taking action yeah. Yeah. you know so he's just yeah. going to keep using you yeah for well let, let me just say this too because um i i said this to susan one time is so profound and i just want people to know that god's calling all of us mm-hmm. and i said to her like susan what do you think like one day i was just going over this thing, i was just being amazed i thought i can't believe god did like used us right mm-hmm. nobody's like we're just how did he, well, why? Mm-hmm. So I said, so what do you think would happen if we never said yes? Mm-hmm. What do you think would happen? Mm-hmm. She said, nothing. We would have just kept on living and we mm-hmm. never would have known the difference. Mm-hmm. That's profound. Mm-hmm. And think about all the things God is pouring into our lives every single day. Opportunities, opportunities. Mm-hmm. Go talk to that person. Go talk to that person. Yeah. Go help that lady. Go help that single mom. Go mm-hmm. encourage her. Go, you know, we miss it all the time. It happens every day. Yeah. And what would have happened if you helped that single mom three years ago or whatever the situation is? What happens if you answer those calls? Because we get them all the time. We just don't hear them. We're all equipped in our own way to do things. And I think kind of think of like a person standing on the edge of a, a lake, a calm water, and throwing pebbles and throwing larger rocks and big ones and and they're all making different size ripples but they're all ripples and so maybe what i do or jared does or you do they all look different yeah because we threw different size pebbles and rocks but they all created an effect in the water that moved in somebody else's life good analogy and i think we're all capable it's just some people i think are hold themselves back because they see someone else's great work. They see someone else's big ripple and they go, oh, I can't do or that. Or fear, right? Right. And uh, I always... Uh, fear and, not. The most, <laughs> the most recurring thing said in the Bible, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think that God always gives you something small. Like for us, it was raising $17,000. And we never thought anything beyond that. Right, that was right. just you small. You proved right? yourself in that right? first mm-hmm. year. Like, so, <laughs> so if you're able to start with the small things, answer mm-hmm. the small call, like you're not yeah. going to get... How did she get min- that letter? Like, what was our? We had a neighbor that used to work in Thailand. They were good friends with this missionary. Okay. She got it and she sent it, shared it with my wife. My wife's okay. We'll do it. I'm like, got it. No. <laughs> so what happened was we we thought, okay, now we got a problem. So we started looking for land. We bought seventy two acres. Started developing that, and uh, we 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 uh, yeah, we built a boy side first. We had all these different phases and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So we started building two thousand five. And then, but it was difficult too, right? And um, that's when that the first story in that book, uh, the death of a child. And I was just, we were still losing people to different things like malaria and different stuff like that. I'm like, God, why? Like, mm-hmm. I, I feel like I'm spinning my wheels here. Mm-hmm. I don't want to raise kids for them to go back into those shanty slums. Like, what's mm-hmm. the point of doing that? And then um, that guy came to my door, middle of the night. And I was, I, I don't know why I was in a bad mood that night, but I just opened the door. I was just annoyed with this guy. Then I noticed he's got tears in his eyes. Mm-hmm. I'm just, you know, what happened? Like, mm-hmm. you know, and he says, oh, I need money to buy a coffin for my daughter. And I was mm-hmm. just broken. I just couldn't believe my attitude. Mm-hmm. And I just wasn't expecting him to say that. Mm-hmm. And um, we did the funeral and everything. And, uh, uh, I, I just couldn't get it out of my mind. So uh, sometime during that week, he was part of my construction crew because we were building buildings, right? And um, I had a meeting with my guys. I said, hey, guys, I just want to know, um, you, you guys have been working with me for a number of years now. What's changed in your life? Mm-hmm. And you all looked at me. Like, they didn't say a word. They looked like deers in the headlights. Mm-hmm. They didn't say a word. Like, nothing's changed. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm like, well, let me give you an example. Like in my life, I want to have more money in my bank this year than the last year. Mm -hmm. So I do things like I save my money, I invest my money, I, I make my money grow. I want to have a better relationship with God this year than I did last year. So I, I read my Bible, I pray, I get involved in church, I, you know, I, 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 I study the Word of God, I live the Word of God. I want a better relationship with my, my wife better than this year than I did last year. So I spend time, I'm intentional with, with my relationship with my wife, with my children. I want to have more knowledge this year than last year. So I read, I study, I do things to make myself grow in my brain, right? Mm -hmm. I, I just want to get better every year. So I said, for example, this little girl died of malaria. I said, like, for example, guys, when you get paid this month, go out and buy mosquito nets for your kids. It's $10. Mm -hmm. Go buy yourself a mosquito net for your kids. And then the following month, go buy, buy your wife a frying pan so she can make some good meals for you guys. Mm -hmm. And then the following month, get yourself, go buy a mattress because they all sleep on like potato sacks. Mm -hmm. Go buy a mattress so you can have a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. And then go fix your roof because you guys are all builders and mm -hmm. all leak. Fix your roof. Mm -hmm. And guess what's going to happen? After one year, you're going to look back and say, hey, I have money in the bank. My kids are healthy. Mm -hmm. We're eating well and we're sleeping well. My life's changed. And keep doing it every year. Mm -hmm. Little, small increments every mm -hmm. year. And you're going to look back and you say, wow, my life has changed. I can do stuff. My family's healthy. My family's... Right? right? So then I thought, well... It's a well, lesson, though, no matter where you are living in the world... It applies to everybody. It's, yeah, the it's the same. It's the same exact thing. I guarantee if you asked 10 Americans, how is your life you know, better this year than it was last year? They'd all scratch their head too. Yeah, right? That's, <laughs> so, I'm, not, I'm not reading any book. <laughs> I still treat my wife like crap. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 I still need to remodel getting, and, in my kitchen. Like, you know, it's like, holy cow. But so I, then I started, I started thinking about it. Okay, I, I actually started writing th things down. Like, and that's how the book came out of. Yeah. Like, first of all, we got to get right with God. That's the first thing before you do anything else. You mm -hmm. got to get right with God. And if you're right with God, you feel that peace of God and 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 the leading of God. But you can't mm -hmm. have that if you don't have a relationship with God. That's right. Right. That gives you peace. And that gives you. You know, that gives you the starting point. And then choosing the principal choice, if we could actually get to choose our life, right? What do you want? And what are you doing to get it? What's the plan, right? So being intentional and then walking the extra mile. Why do you think you, sh you deserve more when you don't do more? Right? So though, and then it's just principle after principle. I think it's 15 in that book, right? It's just really common sense that God's like, why can't you guys do this? This is so easy. I gave it to you, right? But um, so then I started teaching my kids. I, I did workshops. And, um, and then I did another one. Another book's called Amazing Abundance because it's the same principle. Like, one well, broke. I'm broke. Yeah, but you, you get a dollar and you spend two. No wonder you're broke. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, it's the same principle of doing right. small incremental increases mm -hmm. at a time. And then you'll end up it doesn't mean you're going to be a billionaire, but it means like you're going to or you go on vacation. Mm -hmm. your, your kids can play sports. Your kids can have mm -hmm. braces. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can take your wife out for dinner. Mm -hmm. Whatever, right? Mm -hmm. so, so you have this 72 acre at this yeah. point property yeah. that you've moved onto. Like yeah, this is, we moved. You're, the, yeah. you're building educational. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a full campus. I mean, geez, we go to Hope Children's Home over here in Tampa that... Our, our business donates a lot of money to every year and we're heavily involved and that's 55 acres so 72 that's a large piece of property the whole campus is 55 55 acres is okay whole, the whole thing okay so, so big. are you still on that piece of property is that still yeah i gotta tell you about it so we build a school we our school goes from preschool to 12th grade mm -hmm. and then we have a scholarship program so every child has to pick. When they graduate, they have to pick trade school, college, which is a diploma program, or university, which is a degree program. So right now we have 75 kids in post-secondary education, mm. including five in medical school. And we wow. have our first doctor graduated. We have several nurses that have graduated. Mm -hmm. We have at least one teacher. We have one, uh, one or two in law school. Mm. We have... Um, 
uh, one in pharmacology. Are they going to school in the country? In the country. Yeah. yeah. Actually, we have two going to school in Morocco. Interesting. So like, I don't even know what they're taking up there. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. So they like a Hope Children's Home in Zambia. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Locally, this place, Hope Children's Home, is for children zero to eighteen years old, whose parents and families are in a very rough shape, or Mm -hmm. just for some reason cannot take care of that child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they are loved on Mm -hmm. and taken care of and educated and Mm -hmm. live a wonderful life with people who care about them in a beautiful Mm -hmm. campus. They're they're building a building right now so they can start bringing in like babies. Yeah. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Now they're starting to go more towards uh, actually a, a community that they where they want a, a mothers who are considering abortion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're, it's called um, bundles of bundles hope. of hope, and they want to have a community that is awesome. where moms can go and have their babies mm-hmm. and can help get the help that they need mm-hmm. yeah. to encourage them to have their baby rather than the alternative. Right. Mm-hmm. And then if they still can't care yeah. for that baby, at least that baby yeah. can have a life. Right. They said that, that it's always been that. three. It's been like, keep the baby and try on your own, abort the baby or give the baby up for adoption. They want to give a fourth, fourth option of, Hey, come have the baby with us. And we're going to walk with you for the first couple of years to teach you how to take care of your that baby. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I mean, you're, there's so much overlap. Yeah. With what you're I doing on the yeah. other side of the world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And they have a school on campus and, yeah. uh, you know, all of those things as well, yeah. which is really cool. It's almost like, I feel like I should almost like connect. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Just because you, you could help or learn from each other in some yeah. way. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they do stuff in, uh, in, in Honduras. They have a, 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 a Hope Children's Home in Honduras and also one in New Mexico and wow. here in the States. And then now they're the next. I love to meet these people. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Next mission. Yeah. I was just at a benefit. And they're right here in Tampa. Yeah, wow. right here in Tampa. It's the best city. Acres. Best city That's, in the right. State. That's right. <laughs> Unbelievable. And so, um, how much time are you spending over there? Obviously, there's a lot you can do remotely. Yeah. But how much are you over there? I know you were recently. <clears throat> yeah. So we, um, I've been. I stayed there up to nine months at a time, whatever. But usually, I go on two or three week trips. Yeah. So I, we have a, so we have a hundred staff right now, all Zambians. We have only one Canadian staff, and they're they they're there to mentor our farmers and teach uh, modern farming, mm-hmm. modern uh, agricultural techniques. But we have um, a great management team. We have a youth pastor and a pastor that's in charge of the the village and his wife and we have a school principal like we have all these different managers we have like a a construction manager farming manager Mm -hmm. dorm parent manager um we have uh obviously the school the education the management and then we have cafeteria purchasing like maintenance and security all kinds of stuff right are are any of these employees people that have grown up in the orphanage um a couple yeah yeah, like that kid Pakishan in the book. Uh-huh. He's uh, he's uh, he's my driver, and he's, he's one of the construction workers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he wasn't academic at all. Like he was yeah. just like. <laughs> he, and, was, he worked with his hands. Yeah. yeah, but he yeah. loves. He's a great worker, and, yeah. and he married one of our girls. One of the girls that came in. So. Uh, so a great couple. If someone was listening to this right yeah. now, which there are, there are people listening. There are. I'm um, telling. You. And they're sitting there going. Okay, great, but what could I do? What what would what would be your encouragement to uh, to somebody, whether it be specifically for uh, in helping with the ministry that you're doing, or maybe it's something else. Maybe God's calling them to do yeah something absolutely. else. Like, well, what would be your encouragement to them? Yeah, absolutely. I would say first of all, pray and ask God, what, what do you want me to do? Mm-hmm. Right, and then maybe get and then familiar. listen to your wife. I'm just kidding. And then wait for your wife to have a vision. Yeah, that would be a joke. So, yeah. But there's a lot of really great ministries doing a lot of good work Mm -hmm. that they can get involved with. So I would say, yeah, or contact us because we do need a lot of child sponsorships. And we're going to be doing a lot of new projects. Do you do child sponsorships similar to like a Compassion International? Exactly. Yeah. 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 We mm-hmm. do that. And seeds of uh, seeds of hope.com, right? Yeah, seeds of hope cm.com. C- CM. CM stands for children's ministry. There's a few other seeds of hope out there. Gotcha. So we're seeds of hope children's ministry. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, we're based out yep. of uh, Washington, yep. Bellingham, Washington, mm-hmm. or 
Abbotsford, mm-hmm. uh, British Columbia. If somebody wanted to read any of your books, where would they? How would they get a book? You can find uh, my books. I have two of them: Amazing Abundance, and you two can have Amazing Life, and that's on Amazon. Mm-hmm. And some bookstores have them as well, but you mm-hmm. can order it on Amazon. Very simple. Yeah. So just you can Google my name, whatever that'll come up. Yeah. So, so what, what's what, what's next for you guys? Are there any are there any other looming ideas or projects in the works? Or yeah, it be kind of got you all. So so a few years ago, we had friends that had a, a ministry in Thailand, and they were dealing with HIV women, and these were like adult. adult orphans some of them came out of the sex trade some of them their husbands brought home the the virus and they died and and the family shuns them now they're they're um, there's a stigma associated with that and a lot of them have um mental illness Mm -hmm. like one of the women um her mother when their daughter her daughter's age age 13 she sold them Mm. and all she's known is the sex trade Mm. And uh, another one, her brother, when her parents died, her brother used to sell her to his friends. And if she didn't do what she was told, they would taser her. Mm. So she has, there's a lot of trauma. These women have gone through yeah. tremendous trauma. So they were uh, ministering to them. They had a home for them, and they, they did some vocational training. Some of them were able to leave, but most of them were have, like, they're just not capable of living on their own. So we took over that ministry because... Um, um, our friend died. He'd, he had cancer. So he was, he, before he dies, hey, John, would you guys come over and help us continue mm-hmm. this program? It was really urgent. So we did that. So we're there, and um, actually we were home. We, we hired a manager, and we, we started we doing renovation. We're, we're sprucing it up a little bit. And uh, we got an email. Well, our chairperson there was a woman, is a pastor, and she deals with... Uh, women and uh, different things like that ministries, and she said she bought a ch- she bought a boy. I'm like, you bought a boy? Yeah, he's being sold for the third time. He's four years old, so we bought him. So we're gonna bring him to you. Uh, you bought a boy? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? So she, yeah, yeah, bring you. Yeah, you can bring him. We we figured out. We made space for him. We we had a caregiver for him. And then when Susan, when I, Susan and I went there, soon after, we met this little boy. And we're like, how many more are out there like him? Mm-hmm. So we, we, we came back and we, did a, we talked to our board and we said, we want to know what's going on. We want to know if this is going to be a big need and maybe we, get, we can do something because we, we can help this little boy. Mm-hmm. So we went back, we talked to police task force members we talked to other ministries we talked to ministries that do the rescuing we talked to ministries mm-hmm. that um, are associated with these with this, um, street wor- uh, sex workers and stuff and this is what we found out was there's a lot of organizations that do the rescuing with the police and stuff and then what happens they have nowhere to bring these kids mm-hmm. what do you do with these kids so, so they save them from this life but then what but then what so a lot of times they go back to the parents that sold them or I was talking to the police, uh, and he, I said, and he was telling me there's a lot of them are from Laos or from Burma or from Cambodia. And I said, oh, what happens then? Well, we just bring them to the border. I said, you, you just bring them to the border? Then what? Mm-hmm. Like, I've been to the Golden Trail. I know what yeah, that border crossing is like, right? Year old, seven year old. Mm-hmm. Eight, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. Like, I know there's no social welfare there. There's nobody there that's going to take care of them. Like, right. who's, who takes them? From there, mm-hmm. they go back. Right. Right? I was just shocked. I was yeah. just angry yet. Mm. So lack of we system. thought, okay, we can do this. So mm-hmm. we, and it, and it was the most amazing thing. So we, we contacted a, a, an architect. Uh, we contacted builders. We got the quotes. We got the drawings. We got the permit, like everything. Boom, 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 boom. Within a year, we're up and running. The buildings mm. were up. I couldn't believe it. the money came in, like, it's like $300,000. Mm. Just came, boom, just like that. Mm. I've never seen something. We've been yeah. building these thing, buildings for years now. Mm-hmm. I've never seen something coming on budget, way before time. Like, mm-hmm. bam, 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 and we mm-hmm. have kids. We had like, I think, I think we got four kids in the beginning, and then we're there. Susan and I were there, and we get a call from social welfare. We got, we they got, I think it was fourteen kids. We're gonna bring them in this afternoon. 
And we already knew about them because they... 14 they, in one batch that yeah, were yeah, rescued. Yeah, so they said, we already knew, we were expecting them. And they, for some reason, they ended up in the orphanage, in the government orphanage first. And I don't know what they're doing, like some kind of medical stuff, whatever. And then, okay, today's the day we're going to bring them. So they come over with this big van. And we're excited. We're not, we're not, we don't know really what to expect, right? But we're kind of excited. We got, four, we got and we have the rooms all set up. We have everything set up for yeah, them. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> and the van pulls up. And, and so it's our Thai manager and me and Susan. And we're standing there and the door goes swinging open. And these kids are in there and they're, they're silent. They're looking at us. They're scared. I, I knew right away they're scared. Yeah, they don't, they don't know. They don't know who we What's are. What's this situation of? They don't know if they're sold. They don't know nothing, right? They're just scared. And the driver comes around. He starts barking out orders. Yo, get out. Come on. Move, move. I don't, he's doing it in Thai. I know exactly what he's saying. He's screaming at these kids. I want to, I want to punch this guy. Shut up. <laughs> right? So the kids come out and they're like. Oh, my gosh. And their they're age range is what? The youngest is like 5 to 14. The mm. oldest is 14. Goodness gracious. Right, so they're scared, and like we're looking. The, the, our manager, she knows all of us. She realized, okay, she's like, no, you're safe. You're gonna, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna house you. We're gonna, you know, you're, we're gonna love you. Everything's good. Mm -hmm. Like she's trying to calm them down. There's no speech. There's no talk. They're just like blank, scared. So we brought over two duffel bags of Lego, mm -hmm. and then just dumped them. So out. Susan goes, and I don't know. She went, drags these duffel bags out. She's kind of motioning to the kids, and she gets on the floor. We all get on the floor, and the kids get on the floor. And like, what? They had never seen Lego before in their whole lives. They never seen Lego. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, within a few minutes, giggling, mm. giggling, and they're built like they figured it out. Yeah. I mean, like, mm. They're kids. All of a sudden, you never would have guessed who these kids are. They're, they're just a bunch of kids playing. Mm -hmm. That's what I said, the sound of freedom. Yeah, the video. That yep. The video that? Yeah, well, they not for Jared. Mm -hmm. So then, we, so then uh, the playground came after. But Yeah. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. Shooting baskets. And, yeah. We would just stare in October, was it? And um, there was this little girl. I don't know what she went through. She's about... Um, 12 to 11 and she's unresponsive like she won't talk she won't look at you in the eye she'll look down mm -hmm. like we don't know what happened to her and and she won't she won't even talk to susan she was like with women she was even worse with women, mm. which was strange yeah so we have a couple that are dorm parents for the boys and then we have another couple of a couple of women for the girls, but the, the the dad is teaching all the kids how to play guitar, right? So now they're going to do a special evening for Susan and I because we're going to leave the next day, and they're doing this performance. The music, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The other video that you sent where the yeah. kids are performing. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember. Send me I can't. Two. You I can't remember. One of the playground, just very quiet and serene, with the kids all outside just playing and mm -hmm. laughing and yeah, and giggling. Fun. You can hear it, and mm -hmm. you know, like it should sound. Yeah, right. Like playground. it should sound right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, an indoor performance of some song. Yeah, the guitar. Yeah. yeah, I didn't show you her face because I'm not. I'm, I don't show the face of those kids, right? So um, I was sitting there, and I'm like, Susan, it's it's her. She's singing at the top of mm. her voice. She's playing guitar and it's worship song and she's worshiping. And I'm like, it's, I can't believe it's mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. It's like, I was just like, I couldn't believe, I was just praising God. Like, what a miracle. This girl has come out of her shell. Wow. It was so yeah. amazing. That's amazing. So, and how much time did that take for her to get to that? It's been over a year. Yeah. So we have a psychologist. So our project in Thailand per cap, per person, like per child, costs us a lot more mm -hmm. because we have, a, we've hired a social worker, a nurse, and a, and a psych, uh, not a psychiatrist, but a psychologist. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. we have our regular yeah. managers and dorm mm -hmm. parents and maintenance, yeah. all that kind of stuff. But, yeah. Or then we have private Christian school because we send our kids to Christian school. Yeah. Right? We want to. We we don't want to send them to Buddhist school because we want to. Uh, we want the school to uh, 
uh, reinforce what we're right. teaching. Yeah. That God loves you. God forgives you. God mm -hmm. is cleansing you. God has a plan for you. God, yeah. is, you know, all these things. Like, you're not going to get that in a Buddhist school. That's in Buddhist amazing. school, you're going to get, you know, if you're suffering, is because you did something in a previous life. Sure. Wow. So hmm. we want healing. We, we were praying for healing for these kids, that God will raise them up and do amazing things through their yeah. lives, right? So... Our plans for that home, we decided that... So we started small. We wanted to start really small in Thailand with, with the children. I think we have um, 16 right now. I'm not really sure, 16. And so we, we built it in a way that it's modular. We, we can add on. So we have the playground in the middle. You saw the playground. And now we want to build two more homes and a library because we want to really put a big emphasis on education. They're, they're behind education because of their background. Yeah because they, they missed out on a lot of stuff. So we want to really encourage and help them uh, with yeah. their learning. Yeah. How much space do you have here at this location? We have about five yeah. acres on that. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have room. So, we, so what we did, we had the problem. We subdivided the women are on one side and then the children on the other side. Yeah. And we put it like a wall between yeah. them. But they, they interact, but they also have their own space. Have, yeah, absolutely. Wow. That's good. Amazing. We so thank, that's, that's, thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, um, it takes it takes good people to, un, to pardon yeah. me for my huddle uh, <laughs> interruption. Yeah. Shh. yeah, I would um, say it takes good people to stand up against evil. Yeah, I'd yeah. say it takes faithful people, faithful people, people who not only hear but then listen and respond mm. in obedience. Like that's like with the, out the second, like like you said earlier, you know your wife would have come to you and you said, hey, that's awesome, and you do nothing, well, then nothing happens. Exactly. So right. it's, that, it's that response and obedience to the Spirit that is so key um, for all of us. And that, like, that's, how, that's how God has chosen to transform the world through his people, uh, but it only works. Uh, number one, we have to listen. Number two, we have to respond in obedience. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for... for repeatedly it wasn't you know the one off of hey we did it back to yeah, back, back to, back to life, british columbia and, and things that we know you know yeah. to continue to listen and continue to say hey what's next and and I, I always like to encourage people too like that's what makes life with jesus like it's an adventure and you never know what the next turn is going to be and you never know the, the crazy ways that, that God's going to show up and do. I don't know. To me, it, it makes, it, it, it takes life uh, with Jesus from being about how can I not sin to, hey, how is God using me to build his kingdom? Like these, these are two different things. And I don't think God wants us to live in that, that world of, man, I just got to not sin today. Like yeah. that's, that's not where God wants us to live. He wants us to live in that space of, hey, I want to use you to do something to help another person uh, be better and to, to transform that life. So I just thank you for being that, uh, that example uh, and for help, allowing us to hear how God is just using you guys uh, as normal people to do incredibly supernatural things. Yeah, and you know what? I, I really feel um, privileged. Yeah. Like I, sometimes I wake up and I think, what, like, what did I ever do to deserve yeah, this? Because right. it's been an amazing journey for yeah. me. And, and for my kids, like, oh, I got five daughters and four of them are nurses because of this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, my one daughter is a pediatric um, palliative nurse, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what she did when yeah. was, as a little girl, she was giving all meds, right? Mm -hmm. And my other daughter's the, the, the adopted one. She's going into psychology to deal with adoptive kids yeah. and their uh, trauma and different things right wow. so this is all because of that yeah. and, all, and my kids have traveled the world they've, yeah. they've, they've lived yeah. in Asia yeah. and in Africa with me such a big deal to be able to see yeah, uh, they have outside a whole of your own context yeah mm. it's just been an amazing um, good. journey for me I, that's what I read in the book of, living a life of faith should be an amazing journey yeah absolutely an amazing an amazing, amazing adventure yeah. right? that's right that's right. God doesn't want us sitting in a That's rocking right. chair. That's right. Uh, yeah, watch it. And watch a Netflix. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, which isn't an awful thing to do yeah. late at night. You <laughs> yeah. know, when you have the time after yeah. you know working all day. Yeah, yeah. You know. 
Yeah, well, not when you're working I'm, your second job at well, night. That's I guess. true. <laughs> he needs to sip, sip on some coffee to keep himself awake to yeah, watch an extra yeah. Netflix show mm. special. But I lo- that's what's great about the name, too, is Seeds of Hope. You know, or, yeah. We're seed planters yeah. as people. Yeah. God, God grows the, tr- the tree, right. you know. But if we can just plant seeds yeah. uh, in others and just be catalysts in some way, you know, I, I always feel like I play such a small part in the in in things in God's plan. You know, but I, I, I at least feel like with the podcast, I'm giving voice to people who are doing amazing things and, and sharing that. And I feel like you know, story and storytelling of, of our lives is really what connects people and what touches people and moves people to action. So at least in some small way, that's my ripple is. Well, Chris, I think in okay. heaven you're going to be really surprised because people are going to be coming up to you. Hey, man, I heard you on the podcast and yeah. you changed my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, yeah. you don't or, know, or right? someone this... I had on the yeah. podcast yeah. changed, you know, like yeah. you heard Joe's story and that yeah. moved you. And yeah. so yeah. that was yeah. moved you to reach out to me. And then sure yeah. enough, here we are talking. Yeah. So how cool. Yeah. Uh, it's wonderful. I just, so it's Seeds of Hope CM. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For for anyone interested in helping and in, in learning more about what John is doing, uh, how you can help, uh, and 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 look for those opportunities uh, in your own life, um, and I'm sure they're there if you really do look and if you get in prayer and ask God to show you yeah. those opportunities, they'll show up. I wanted to do something which I, I, I typically never do, but it's very short. The last chapter is the your eulogy section, and I just thought it was very. It's kind of an entertaining way to end because I had, I was not familiar with this story that you started it with, and I thought it was very interesting of the two brothers. Oh, okay. And, and, and I wanted to share that with the audience, so you'll get this in, in in John's book. You too can have an amazing life. So, John, chapter sixteen, your eulogy. I promised people I'll make this short, but I thought I was really moved by this, and it's kind of a nice laugh to end a pretty serious conversation. You open with Proverbs twenty one twenty one: Whoever pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. And then it goes like this: A story is told of two wicked brothers. It seems they had swindled and taken advantage of everybody in their small town. They were known for their dishonesty and shrewd dealings. They caused tremendous hardships for everyone they met. One day, the younger brother died suddenly, and the older brother went to see the pastor of the church where the funeral would be held. He promised the pastor a large sum of money if in the eulogy he would say that his brother was a saint. The pastor had quite the dilemma, as the church really needed the money. But to say this man was a saint would have been outrageous, to say the least. In addition, the pastor would have lost tremendous respect from his congregation if he ever said such a thing. The day of the funeral came, and the little church was packed, as the parishioners had heard of the pastor's dilemma and wanted to see how he would handle the situation. I'm sure Jared really wants to know. <laughs> you know, I'm glad that that's when the page turned. You know, it is. like ooh, ooh. it's the right time for the page turn. As the service began, the pastor stood up and said the usual prayers and required rites of the church, and then started the eulogy. He pointed to the man in the coffin and said, "He was a much despised man because he robbed and cheated everyone he had ever met." There wasn't an ounce of kindness anywhere in his heart. But compared to his brother sitting there in the front row, the deceased was a saint. (laughs) (laughs) And that's how the pastor was able to say. He was a saint. He was a saint. What's the lesson of this story? The lesson is, if you're a pastor of a church, be very discerning. (laughs) In someone offering large sums of money to lie. Mm-hmm. And uh, think about it for a little while. Maybe you come up with something pretty creative to say mm-hmm. like that. No, I, it was really the, the whole meaning behind the book, obviously, is that there's so much opportunity for us out there in our interactions with people. And that we should realize in every day that there are moments to live our best life. Um, there, there's people 
uh, that, that we can love on, that we need to show that love to, that we need to tell them. Uh, and every day is a, an opportunity to do that and to never have lived with those regrets. None of us need to be in that situation where we're near death regretting all of those what ifs. You know, today, live out your what if. Make it a reality so that you don't have those regrets. And I think you're a man of no regrets. Yeah, very little anyways. Yeah, mm -hmm. Very little anyways, <laughs> right? So it has truly been an honor for, for you to come here and to continue, you know, just bless you and your work. And I will do my due diligence in linking you up with our local amazing Hope Children's Home to see just just to know who those people are and them to know well, who you are. I'd love are. to hear more about them, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so much overlap there. And thank you again, Mr. Uh, I can almost hold it all the way. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's, it, just having you in the room is always great in these moments and for what you can share and yeah. contribute. So. Yeah. No, it's been great. Thank you so Cheers. much for coming. Great are you, meeting are you. Are you, you too. are you hungry? Do you have a minute? I'm Greek. I'm always hungry. Are you going to close the episode out? <laughs> yeah, I'm closing it right now because oh. we're going to go maybe have something to eat. I thought, I thought, you know, we were bringing everyone with us to well, go get some food. And if you listening are hungry, have something to eat. It's time. But we're going to go Now's eat ourselves. Yeah, yeah, we would love for you to join us if only you were here in Tampa. Uh, thank you, listeners of the Strong by Design podcast. We love you. We appreciate you so much. Do what John did. Reach out to us by email. No jokes. And uh, let us know if you have a story to share. And uh, we would love to hear about that because maybe one day you could be sitting in this chair. And what is have, the email? It is strongbydesignpodcast at gmail.com. There you go. Pretty easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you can't forget that Someone, one. People have been writing strongbydesign at gmail.com and they're just mad because no one's responding. It's happening. Yeah. Strongbydesignpodcast Podcast. at gmail.com. Yeah. And our team can, uh, we'll check in on that. I promise I will. And uh, hopefully get back to you. And uh, hey, if you haven't already, leave a five-star rating or a review. You can even reach out to us in your review of the show. Let us know how this episode has moved you to action, hopefully, or a past episode on the show. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. God bless you. We'll talk with you very soon. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. If you found value in today's episode, please subscribe so that more people can find out about our show. Plus, you don't want to miss any future episodes with the amazing guests and topics we have lined up for you.